Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another tutorial episode of War in the East 2. Um, while in the last tutorial we have seen um, and discussed about factories and production, um, in this tutorial we will briefly see how everything um, that is being produced is actually um, carried away from the factories and towards the uh, front line. And um, let me just um, just recap uh, one concept that we we discussed in the previous tutorial. Um, we have uh, seen that factories produce um, a certain amount of goodies in tons. This is expressed in tons. Now, why is this important? Um, because I, I don't know if you noticed, but all of the factories are located in hexes with um, either uh, a city or uh, a village or a, a urban center or they are located uh, on uh, uh, say in hexes with a railway uh, just just to recap because I think I mentioned this before but um, it's good to um, go through it again because this is one of the key components of the uh, beating heart of this title um, railways there are two types of railways uh, in war in these two there is the this one here with this uh, single thin black line with those um, um, uh, dashes they look like yeah this is this indicates the single track railway line while the, no, sorry, these, these are not dashes. Uh, while these thicker um, dashed black and white line indicates the double track railway line. Um, what's the difference between these two? Um, it's very simple. The double track railway line can uh, support the transfer of up to 40,000 um, tons of we will see it in, in a moment, while the single track railway line can only support up to 12,000 tons of... Um, you, we will see it in a, in a second. So, everything that is being produced from the factories is converted into freight. Freight is like the um, representation of everything that is moved within the supply grid and the supply grid includes the uh, railway network the road network and the the sea lanes so factories produce uh, manpower resources fuel supplies food ammunition tanks planes uh, self-propelled guns you know everything and then once everything is produced um, is uh, transported via railway to the so-called national supply um, sources, also known as NSS. And if we activate the uh, logistics um, info on the map, um, the NSS are easily identifiable because they have this huge white star, this inverted triangle and the number zero. Uh, inside the triangle. The Axis has four of them, in one in Berlin, one in Frankfurt, one in Prague, and one in um, um, in, uh, in Vienna. And the NSS represent like the um, uh, culmination center in which all the freight generated by the factories is accumulated. They are, yeah, like collection points, like uh, giant uh, warehouses that collect everything and then from the NSS the uh, freight is sent towards the, the units uh, in the east so on the front line but also towards um, uh, the other units like the ones uh, deployed in the uh, in the Western Europe or Western uh, France uh, theater box and um, there are basically three ways through which freight can be transported. The, the most important one and the, the most crucial and the one that you really have to focus on are um, railways. And uh, you see that um, when, um, high, when um, uh, activating the 
uh, I call it the logistics map. You see that railways um, do acquire a, a, a different color. Um, this color indicates the usage of the railways. Uh, because, let's not forget, first of all, factories produce, uh, produce resources and everything that gets converted into freight. Freight is first shipped via railway towards the NSS, the National Supply um, Source, and then the NSS ships the freight uh, away again towards um, other things that we will see in the next tutorials. And if you hover the mouse um, over one hex with the railway, you see the line Axis Rail Usage. Um, the color tells you how much this stretch of railway has been already used. And uh, for instance, in, in this case, this stretch has uh, hardly been used. Uh, this one um, allowed the, the transfer of six tons of uh, freight. Um, this one here, right next to Berlin, uh, transferred uh, 5,416 uh, tons of freight. While you see here, this one here, uh, it says uh, 10,000, nearly 11,000. And uh, remember, I told you that, that the single track railway lines only support 12 uh, thousand tons and um, you have to keep this in mind because uh, whenever you are trying to redeploy units via the uh, rail mode um, any unit that uses a uh, certain let's say um, stretch of railways is occupying this railways this uh, railway track uh, for the next logistics phase so if you move, uh, it's, let's say, a, 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 a division from Poznan to, uh, to Warsaw, you are very likely to saturate this uh, single uh, track railway line here um, with your uh, movement. Because it's, um, yeah, it's, the, the game mimics the fact that you are already moving railway convoys throughout this line, so if you are moving troop convoys, you cannot move uh, supplies and, in general, freight um, convoys. Um, one important aspect to, to keep in mind of uh, in regard to the uh, railway transfer of freight is the uh, ra rail, rail yard um, capacity uh, that ca can be seen here by activating the uh, rail mode. Now, you see these um, 20, 50... 50, 29, uh, 60, 29. This is the residual rail yard capacity um, in these uh, hexes. The rail yard capacity is generated by, uh, uh, of course, the um, rail yard. Uh, rail yards that must be of level 2 or above in order to generate. Uh, uh, yeah, rail yard um, capacity. The rail, rail yard capacity is the, uh, as the name says, is the ability to move freight on the on the rails. This is, uh, yeah, it's it mimics like having uh, more uh, rolling stocks, more uh, railway convoys, railway cars, more uh, locomotives, uh, and also more infrastructures. Uh, because you have to imagine these, uh, let's say, level five rail yards uh, being very large um, um, uh, rail yards with plenty of um, infrastructures, cranes and um, um, crews uh, which can help in uh, loading and unloading uh, freight. And um, the, the number here uh, indicates the residual uh, ra rail yard capacity uh, of this specific uh, rail yard. And, the, and of course if you, if you transfer troops across these, uh, uh, this will be uh, indeed uh, reduced. And uh, normally the uh, rail yard capacity um, multiplies, uh, let's say, is calculated by multiplying the level of the rail yard times 10,000 tons. So let's say the rail yard of, of Poznan can allow the transfer of 50,000 tons of, uh, of freight. Uh, and so on uh, and so forth. So always keep in mind about your um, railway usage and uh, be careful in never 
uh, overloading a, a railway tract. Um, the other option that we have to move uh, freight is via ports. Um, ports, first of all, they need to be connected to the supply grid and this occurs either uh, by via a direct uh, railway connection like um, in this case or if a port is isolated from the railway uh, network but it has a um, an open sea lane through which it can be connected to um, other ports uh, then it's fine if let's say there is air interdiction let's say in this area um, the the port of state and let's say the port of the ex of Stettin is totally isolated then this port will be um, isolated and uh, the way ports uh, work is very uh, simple uh, there are two types of ports and they these and they can be distinguished by looking at the uh, color uh, of the icon here um, the White, let's say the blue anchor with the top arrow and the white background indicates export ports. Export ports, they take the freight via railway and then they send it to the import ports. The one with the white anchor, the um, down ar arrowhead um, um, below the anchor and the uh, deep blue uh, background. They take the freight and they ship it to the import ports. Import ports, uh, in turn, they take the freight and they ship it via railways towards, um, say, other things, uh, which are called depot, and that we, we will see in the in the next tutorial. Um, shipping freight from export ports to import ports. Um, takes, uh, say, uh, it requires to have um, cargo ships, as we as we have seen in the in the previous uh, tutorial. And um, if you want to, let's say, if you think that uh, the port of Elbing should not be an import port, but rather an export port, you can uh, select it, and you can click on this uh, on this icon, uh, toggle port type, and then it will ask you change to export port, and you can say uh, yes or no. And the same is true for uh for the uh, for the other ports if you want if you want if you want to change them to um uh import uh ports and uh the last um let's say the last option to move uh freight is via road um the movement of freight on the road occurs in let's say basically two uh, occasions uh, whenever HQ and uh, units need um, um, freight from uh, they, they need to take freight from existing um, depots uh, or, and uh, whenever a, a depot uh, let's say needs um, freight and this the, the requested amount of freight cannot be uh, delivered via um, by, via the uh, railway. Um, the the transfer of freight via roads uses vehicles, and th that's why I mentioned in the previous tutorial that uh, vehicles are generalized as trucks with uh, a um, capacity of 2.5 tons. So now, now you can, you, if you want, you can make the, the math in your head. Uh, if you want to calculate how many trucks are needed to move this amount of supplies from, I don't know, Berlin to, um, to I don't know, to Minsk. You know, I, I'm just saying. And um, if you go in the production screen, there is uh, this section here. You see uh, vehicle in units. Uh, this this number indicates. The, the number of uh, vehicles that are in the units and this is the number of vehicles that are requested uh, to have. And then you see here vehicles in, uh, in depot, vehicles in pool and vehicles in repair. The vehicles in depot are um, the most important ones because these are the ones that will bring the freight and will deliver it uh, to the units during the logistics phase. Of course, um, the usage of vehicles, um, let's say, 
causes what is known as the wear and tear so uh, over time the vehicles will get uh, damaged and uh, indeed uh, damaged vehicles are uh, brought in this um, repair pool, pool uh, in which of course they are getting repaired in the next um, lo logistics phase um, units that have an um, up to 33% of extra vehicles can also use their own vehicles uh, to uh, bring freight from depots uh, to uh, their own um, elements, to, to, to itself, basically. And, um, but, uh, again, uh, I will talk more about these in details in, in one, or, one or two future tutorials, but uh, briefly, I can show you this uh, on the map. Um, you don't want to move your units too far ahead from your um, existing depot because otherwise what will happen is that your units uh, will suffer tremendously in terms of uh, movement points because um, um, let's say part of the movement points have been already wasted in using the, the trucks to go back to the depots and collect the freight and move it back to the unit and these um, let's say traffic causes indeed wear and tear and therefore it um, it um, let's say reduces the final uh, amount of movement points that, that uh, uh, the unit will have in the next uh, turn and um, yeah that's it already for this tutorial um, thank you very much for watching guys, thank you very much for supporting the channel, and uh, if you are still enjoying this series, um, I beg you to stay tuned, because in the next tutorial, we will uncover all the secrets of Depot, and yeah, again, I fear the next tutorial will be slightly longer than the usual ones. Um, well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, I wish you all the best, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next tutorial.